Welcome to another episode of Storytime Podcast, episode two, Dose, Knee, Knees, Nihongo, Japanese, Knee, Itchy Knee, Son, Chi, Yon. You speak Chinese now? Ni- Japanese. 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 Yeah, 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 you know, I know a little bit, so. Um, Kabir, we got Kabir in the building, we'll get to him, but first off, I want to start out to my boy Z, birthday man. Uh, how you feeling today, Z? Let us know. I'm uh, feeling 22. <laughs> <laughs> you got me with that. I was trying to think of the name of the song. <laughs> nah, I feel good, man. It's been a pretty good day. You know, nothing to complain about. So. Man, you really got to go to school on your birthday. How's it? Like I said, like, I had to do nothing too hard. Um, just kind of coasted, you know what I'm saying? Went through the motions. I was, my class schedule is pretty late this semester, so like, I'm not tripping on anything. That's great, that's great. Okay, so, what's so, up? Let us know how you're doing today, man. Well, I'm glad, glad to be back on What Story Vlog Podcast, Season 2. Season 2? Two. Episode 2. Episode 2. two I'm saying, uh, 22. Season right, two. Season, season 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It must be a lucky number or something. Gotta be, gotta be, man. That's a lot of tickets. What's today's date? The third? Uh, <laughs> when the Drees, Drees back again. What's up? What's up, Drees? How you feeling today, man? Good. Glad to be back. Episode two. Back. Yeah, second podcast. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it, it, man. So, uh, anybody got something before we go today? You know, I always can bring some. I'm always I got a, a story. But if you got a story, you know, last time Kabir was with us, you know, they had a yeah. night shifts. So. I'll just uh, give you a little recap or update of my life, basically. Okay. I've been, um... I'm currently shooting my first ever music video. Okay. I've never, never shot a music video before, so yeah. I'm just just yeah. grab my camera and try something else. But so far, the first scene that I scripted out, I wrote down, and I I shot it and started editing it came out pretty good. Okay. Yeah, like my artist James Khalif, he's a he's a indie artist in um, Indianapolis, and he loved it so. I'm now, saying, is it actually uh, like a storyboard to it? Is it like one of those type of music well, videos, or is it a? It's uh, it's more like a skit involved in a vlog. So, okay. what we do on a regular basis is just vlogging. Yeah. And for this, uh, for this episode, I was like, I want to shoot a music video and put it in the vlog. Okay. So that way, you know, it just showcases on how I'm bringing. A mixture of his vlog talent and his rapper talent together in a video. Oh, yeah. So, so far we shot the first scene, and the way I'm the way I'm doing it is like uh, it just takes more time to get all these scenes out. So I want to get like this um, image of his like head spinning mm-hmm. and it's just floating through space, and I want to like I basically just use a green screen and like you know edit it that way, but. That's the next scene I'm going to shoot for him. The next scene after that it will be like the ending scene. And we're kind of debating on whether or not you want to break the fourth wall yeah. and stuff like that. It's, it's a lot for my first time, but that's basically what I've been on doing. I'm also trying to start a brand new uh, social media outlet called If You Say So Okay So on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, it's going to have rants, interviews, podcasts, all that shit. And then if you say so. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty lit. But that's basically what I've been doing for like the last three, four months. Nice. So for that, uh, you're talking about music videos, like head spinning in space. Mm-hmm. So is it like you're going to stay on his face in the background, like spinning behind him? Or is like his head spinning in the background stays still? The background the is background moving. So okay. it's, it's, it's like, like, like on his face. Yeah, like his head is just spinning. So okay. it's all just the process of how I'm trying to incorporate the editing into it and hopefully it turns out good if not i'll scrap it and you know we'll reshoot the scene yeah i mean at the end of the day like it's practice at the very least yeah. right but i think yeah. everyone will like it. y'all have to definitely check it out yeah, I'll show sure. you guys. Sure. 
Man. Y'all see, uh, I got my hair cut today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jay's yeah. actually yeah. coming. Yeah. Got, right. got him right today. Birthday boy. Yeah. <laughs> man, y'all getting yeah, man. closer and closer to season, dog. How you yeah. feeling? Ready. I'm ready, ready to be done with these 6 a.m. workouts we got right now. Y'all still now. going? Yes. Man, what we is got, it? Like week four? Bro, it's like six. Six? So. Yeah, man. So we got Wednesday, Friday, and then we'll be done next Monday. So after that, it's practice every day, though. So I mean. Ready, grind. ready for it, yeah. About that time. It's a grind. About that time, for real. Y'all ready to get to a podcast? Yes. Yeah, All right, so. I think what we're going to talk about today, I'm, I'm going to break it down like this. Um, I know last season, or not necessarily, we never talked about this exactly, but I know I did like a little um, uh, speech on it, like just being an a asset rather than a liability, right? Mm-hmm. Um But today, what I really want to talk about that and what that really entitles in like a group setting, right? So you got a group of friends, you got a group of, you know, your family members, you got a team, you got whatever it may be, but really coming to be an asset rather than a liability and also looking at it from the standpoint of um, you bringing your own talent to the group and really knowing your self-worth, right? Because I think many times we come into a setting, we come into a class project, and we don't necessarily know what our niche is. We don't know what our role is um, in many circumstances. So really, um, let's talk about it from the standpoint. We can go a lot of different ways in this, but let's talk about it first from uh, just different environments or different teams that we've been on, different you know uh, groups that we've been a part of where we didn't really know our role and we kind of had to find that ourselves, and you know we didn't really know where we fit in, yeah. how were we able to do that, and, and kind of what was that situation there. I got a, a good example of this in like uh, last year our basketball team. So, um, just a little bit of background for you guys. Last year our team was really good. We ended up going to the Final Four, um, losing the Final Four, but um, had a crazy season. Won like 24, 25 straight, or some some crazy. But um, so on this team in the beginning of the season, probably like the first half of the season, I wasn't playing. Uh, wasn't playing at all, really, and that was kind of just because we had so many good players, and um, like you said, I was trying to figure out, like, what else I was bringing to the team, because I, last year, I didn't have to score points on this team, because we had we had some hoopers on the team, like, they didn't need me to get any buckets, because we had people, a uh, couple, couple players in 20-plus a game, and then another one, like, 15, so, like, what they needed from me wasn't to, to score the ball, so, like, Going into practice and stuff, I had to kind of figure out like, what well, all right, well, okay, what can I bring to this team to help help make us better? And that that ended up being just kind of like my defensive intensity, uh, my talking, just my kind of like my presence, kind of like uh, energy boosting up the team when we needed it. So um, I was kind of in a way like kind of like a spark plug for the team. And so like halfway through the season, um, I ended up starting the game. Um, and then we kind of, our game kind of just elevated from me being in there. And not like in the sense that of scoring more, but just like, you can, you can just kind of feel it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so that from then on out, I started the rest of the season. Um, started on the team, went to the Final Four, and I was just kind of stuck to that role. It was helping us because we had lost. So we won like 24 straight before, I, but when I started starting, before that we lost a game to a team we had no business losing to, Oberlin. Yeah. That was here. And then coach was like, we need to, change something up and then um, I just kind of found that role and kind of just like stuck with it for the rest of the season so that's real it's real important because every team like you got to know what it is you bring to the table and at the same time like I was like confident in my ability to bring it to the table too like you said like no like knowing your worth and I'm like I know I can bring something to this team I know like I'm not right. just here to sit here and not help like especially when you see us losing the teams we should, shouldn't be losing to so um, just confident, just kept trusting in the process, and then had a hell of a season after that. So, yeah, I'm thinking almost from that aspect too. I think the most difficult part about it is, and, and you know, coming from high school, you're the man. You you want a lot of a little bit of everything, basically. Right. But then really knowing that you're more talented, so so, so you with the group. And, like, you're more talented than what you're demonstrating or, like, the role that the coach gives you. Mm-hmm. So, like, how are you able to, like, you know, it's not necessarily, you know. But in a way, it's, like, humbling yeah, yourself. No, it's, really, yeah, it's, it's nothing bad. So. Definitely. It's really tough, like, mentally, like you said, coming from high school. Like, I mean, 
everybody's the man on their team in high school going into right. going into college. Everybody like everybody was that. Everybody was scoring yeah. at all the points. And I could, you get to college and then boys a little bit bigger, a little stronger, a little faster. Everybody everybody's good. So it's like uh, it's like a little shock. It's like mentally you gotta you know just kind of switch gears and realize like all right, humble yourself a little bit, like you said, and just you know get used to that. But yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I almost want to like explore that more, just like that mentality thing when you go from you know the the big fish in the pond to the you know the small fish in the sea. Well, I mean, have you? I mean, we can take it even to the you know classroom standpoint. Have you ever had to? Um, what was a class that I guess, or not even a class? I want to say that because like you you you're really talented in the classroom, and so like was there ever a point where you had to rotate roles where like you weren't leading? Um, and you can bring another example, of course, too. But like, you weren't leading in the in the classroom, or even or even group like pro- uh, yeah. yeah, like group project or like uh, like your internship. And yeah, then New yeah. York, like, was oh yeah. Like so that? like, I mean, I can touch on that. Yeah, for sure. When I went to New York um, for my internship, it's like a, you know it was a huge company, a billion dollar company, and I'm meeting all kinds of people, and pretty much everyone there had like an MBA. Or you know something like a master's degree, and they're all like they was all in an MBA, huh? They was all in an MBA. No, that MBA. MBA. <laughs> MBA. Um, they do sound similar though. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so like yeah, everyone and oh, like with they, the Knicks. I thought he's with the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, pretty much everyone that I met there had an MBA, or they went to like a prestigious college. Um, like I met this one dude who's from Yale, and then he got his MBA from like Columbia or something like that, and. Yeah, and so, and mind you, this was like my first week or two being there, um, and I, I didn't, it's like a selective program, so, you know, only the top, so many applicants even get an interview, and then out of those interviews, only so many make it, right. but um, I got in, like, I got a free interview basically off of a connection, first of all, um, but I definitely did good in the interview, and like, I, I, I earned that, like, you know what I'm saying? For sure. But... There was definitely like a, what's the, what's that, what do they call that? The imposter syndrome or whatever, like when I got there, I was like, wow, like, mm. like I don't belong with these people, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I got in like on like a technicality or like, you know, some backroom handshakes or something like that. Like, I felt like, syndrome. right. Yeah. So I got a little bit of an imposter syndrome, but then like once like I got into it, you know, and I put my head down and got to work and you know what I'm saying? I, uh, I finally realized that I did belong there and then, uh, you know, I I just right just as much right to be there as anyone else is there. Yeah. And um, worked my way until I finally got like that confidence back where I felt like I was more towards like the top of the class. Type of, you know. Man, I think that's interesting because like many times, just um, from that aspect, like you, we talk about imposter syndrome, but like many times you come into a space where you just don't know where you fit in, and like you really got to kind of do your own self diligence and, and kind of understand yourself and like have confidence in yourself and not only your ability, but you got to kind of know yourself. Um, you know, you got to know what you bring, you got to know what you are capable of bringing in um, and still not let yourself go down when you don't have to, you know, when you don't, the team don't need you to bring it all or like the, the role don't need you to bring all of your skill set or um, you got to get sharp in this one area of, you know, um, analytics, but you're, you're capable of doing communication or something you know and it's right. like um yeah it's tough it's, it's kind of tough. like tone the line between like not being like cocky but like still being confident right. in what you bring to the table and that's that's an important line to be able to tell yeah for real because yeah, you need that confidence but you don't want to be cocky right and so like, mm-hmm. it's really like you said you got to toe the line yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's something you got to like be aware of and that takes like self-awareness you know what i'm saying and you have to be able to be critical of yourself and not everyone can do that. Mm-hmm. It's an important skill. Mm-hmm. To be able to look at yourself and like kind of like look at yourself through someone else's eyes almost. Yeah. And you know, maybe your mannerisms or the way you say things or the way you carry yourself and be able to just recognize and adjust, you know, and grow from that. Yeah. I mean really from any standpoint, that's how you go, like like in the corporate setting or in a, in a work setting, like you got to know what you bring to the table. Let's say, like, you're discussing, like, job offers. I mean, I haven't had to do this yet. You guys, not yet. Um, um, I don't really know exactly what that process is like, but I do know that, like, when you're discussing that and if you think you deserve more, you got to, like, be able to stand firm on that. Like, 
say like, yeah, this is what I bring to the table. Oh, no, I'll let this know. Yeah, like this why this why I deserve more. <laughs> but it's kind of like, because you don't want to sell yourself short, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, I mean, especially like big jobs, they, they're not going to like just want to yeah. throw you more money than what you feel like you like you deserve. So, um, yeah, just just kind of being cognizant of that I think is really important. But when you said that, it made me think of something. Uh, and it kind of, this is a little bit of a shift, but um, it's more about like being a manager, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, if your employees are asking you for a raise, then you're late. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and this was like a post I saw on the internet, so I guess uh, I want to hear your guys' takes on it. But it's like, if your employees are, are like asking you for a raise, then that means that you're like late to give them one. You should have already gave them a raise when you recognize their worth, like you're not paying enough attention to them. Do you think that's true? Or are you saying like... I mean, I think it's definitely valid, but I'm sure that there are people out there who would just keep asking for a raise even if they don't deserve it. Right. You know but uh, I mean, I think that is true. I, I think people will be happier like at a company and they'll be more likely to stay if they are like if they feel like they're getting recognized. Right. And they feel like their work is being appreciated and they're getting the um, appropriate you know, compensation for them. Mm -hmm. So if... if like it, I think it means more if I get a raise because my manager like saw that I was doing good and he's like, yeah, you deserve a raise more than me having to go and ask him for it. Right. Because then it feels like, yeah, he just gave it to me because I asked and like he felt the pressure or something. Huh. What do you think was that for you? Uh, well, my take on this is, I have two takes for for um, the quote that you brought up, but the first one was uh, um, just a perspective from someone that didn't have a lot of confidence and was never really cocky in, in earlier in my years. Yeah. I was always the type of person that would sit back and observe and like learn and soak up. And when the time came to pretty much pick and choose where I wanted to go or where I fit in or involved, I knew um, my talent would fit in, you know, this space because I, I sat back and I watched and I observed. So, Basically, it's like, it's okay to not have confidence and not be understanding or not even know how to toe the line between the two, you know? Mm -hmm. Just sit back, observe, and learn, you know? And uh, the quote that you had brought up, um, yeah, uh, I, it, I pretty much agree with that. Like, if if your employees are asking for a raise, you really are late, and technically, you might just be a really bad employer. Right. You know, because throwing yeah. shots at all the former employees of, of Kabir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're they throwing all... shots. Let that be known. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they are all bad employers. But in this day and age, the job market, the way it looks, it's like you're going to find one. That's just a bad employer because that's just the industry that we live in or the society that we live in. It's just finding whichever one you're comfortable with and sticking and riding it out until... And time's up, find a new player. You know. Just to play like doubles advocates to that, so let's say you work for like like a big corporation mm -hmm. and I mean they're thinking like their mindset isn't necessarily I mean, unless you're like going above and beyond, they probably aren't gonna just offer you more money and just say you deserve more money just because at the end of the day they might think that like what you're doing is might be replaceable by someone else so um sometimes like what if they just think like they want to see kind of they want to see you step out and see like tell them why you deserve that's just another that's just coming from the opposite opposite way just because like like i don't know maybe they don't have the funds to to, to get to make everybody uh give everybody raises so but i see i see both ways for sure and i'm i mean like like you said, it'd be it's good to know that you're doing the work and that your employer sees that the work you're putting in, you deserve more. So, I can see, I guess I can see both both sides to that in that aspect. But right. no, that's definitely valid because like, you can't just be going, you get a raise, you get a raise. right. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> when you're like, a man, you don't got that much. I mean, sometimes you don't got that much money to just be throwing out yeah, raises yeah. to everybody. So it's like, yeah. But I mean, and usually when you're like in a you know executive position like that at a big company, you actually. I, get, I guess you get praised more or you're looked at as like better performing if you're like more like cut back on budgets, not increase them. Right. But at the same time, like it looks good on you if your employees love you and right. if like they're working hard mm -hmm. and the company's thriving. So 
It's everything has a like we said last week. Everything has a trade off. Yep. Every decision you make. I I don't want to take it somewhere, but I mean, when you brought up that quote, my first thing was to take it to and it, it, this is sort of in the in the in this hierarchy standpoint of manager CEO, kind of like the way that they kind of run. But it was a story that um, my girlfriend was telling me last week about like she's a manager, right? So she's a manager at a um, marketplace and uh, basically. Uh, at one point, she was a cashier, right? Like, she she has 14 employees. At one point, she was a cashier. And um, this has nothing to do with your thing. But, like, it just yeah. took me to the store. Sure. Yeah. But she has 14 um, cashiers underneath her. And she has a um, a manager that's above her. And she's a supervisor, right? So she's in the middle. And so the manager's getting on her to tell her, keep her 14 employees busy, right? Like, make sure they're doing this, do that, back to back to back. And at one point you know, back in high school, she was a cashier. So she understands what it's like to go out and get buggies, to go clean the trash, to go do this, go do that. And so in her standpoint, she's like, I'm not trying, she's like, I'll do it myself. You know, like some stuff, I'm not going to tell them to go get the groceries or go get the buggies and then go do the trash and then go do the, sweep the floors. Like, I'm not going to tell them to do that back to back to back when I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And so she's in the standpoint of, and this is how many times that it works, because what he does is less than her. You know, he just sits at the desk all day. She stands up. So it's literally is that, that fine line. And so just thinking about it from, from the corporate standpoint, you know, and, and, and I was this is just from my perspective. What I was saying is that um, many times when uh, when you work to be that, it's grimy. It's, it's really grimy. Like, I understand. But it's – so this is the question, I guess. It, is, it no, is it yes or no? But from my standpoint, I'm going to let it spill. There's no feelings in business. Like, there's just no feelings involved. And so many times, you know, she, she's talking about how she feels about, you know, I'm not trying to do that. But the standpoint of keeping this business operating, we're paying you to tell them to. And, and you know, it you know it sucks that it's that way. But what do you guys, what's your take on it yeah. about, you know, that standpoint of. Uh, uh, I kind of feel like I learned a lot about this in my internship last summer. It's like the higher up you get. Like in the in the corporate setting, like the like the executives, like it's just straight delegation. Like yeah, you run <laughs> you run the business. So like like my managing director, like his head is going a thousand miles per hour because we got all these different clients and stuff he was doing so for. But his job is to he has uh, like the um our our consultants underneath him, and he's just delegating. And I'm on, I'm underneath the consultants, and they're delegating stuff to me. So it's like yeah. he's just de- delegating everything because, like you said, at the end of the day. It's his job to make the business run, and right. so I mean he don't really care what we <laughs> what we got to do to make it run, but just you just got to make it happen. So I mean, it's not yeah. That's just how that's just kind of how business is. At the end of the day, like you got stuff to do, you got to get it done, and so it's just kind of like ladders to it. You kind of got to climb your way up. Is how it works. But uh, yeah, I, I agree. That's kind of how it is. I mean, it's not a lot of things, but I mean, it's not saying like. Every job you work is just cold. They don't care about yeah, you. Sure. Not not like that, but in the sense that like things got to get done. They got deadlines and stuff. That's that's kind of how it is. Yeah, not like that. I'll agree to an extent. To an extent. Yeah, because yeah. like I think most feelings should be like removed from business. Like business should be made. You should be making logical decisions, not necessarily emotional ones. Um, and like you said, you just gotta you gotta get stuff done. You know, the business has to run. But at the same time, like you still gotta be aware of your employee's emotional state. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you shouldn't be like working under death and like, because then they're gonna leave. Right. It's like so. If you want to be a good leader, you still have to be aware um, of, of of emotions and I guess keep a certain control. You know, what I'm saying like don't overwhelm your employees. You know, right. what I'm saying pay attention when they seem like distressed and and let them know that like um, you're there for them. Like at least in some capacity, but like then again, you can't baby everyone. So, like most things, it's a balance, it's a line you got to toe. But um, yeah, I mean, when you start playing around with uh, investor money and stockholder money, that's when like feelings are gone because mm-hmm. you got so other people. Levels. Yeah, once you get to that level, it's like no, there's no more feelings. I got other people's money in my pocket that I'm supposed to spread out this way. You know, and I, if I mess this up, I'm out the business. I can't even pay my employees. So it's 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 an idea that I've always never wanted to make it 
to that type of level. You know, I was always comfortable being somewhere in between, not the supervisor or um, not even the manager. But I was better off. The most comfortable was just as a regular employee because, you know, I, even if I did do above and beyond, the responsibility that I only had was to do the lowest, and I still did that. It just made me feel good to be an employee doing that, you know. So, so this is almost what I, what I how I look at it from a manager or as so the manager, you know, of course, is above the supervisor in this you know scenario. Of course, in many in many scenarios, they don't. It's almost, and you know, even the way that in, in this scenario, the way that the manager talks to her is, you know, he's a he, he's a jerk, but basically, he just he's just all about his, you know, he don't he don't give a crap, you know, and he's he doesn't watch his tone, he just talks the way you talk, mm -hmm. he's not cognizant of that stuff, but it's almost like, um, they don't care, you know, it's like they really don't care about who, and you know. These employees are. We just go out and replace them. And I know you you came from one of those industries, Kabir, where you used to work at Amazon, where they like they really would like let you go right. and say we would find somebody. You know what I'm saying? So how is that fair to the employee? But at the same time, but it's that's the way that the industry works. It's so just no. It's do you get with it or do you get lost? No, 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 no. You know, I, I don't get yeah. lost at all. I used to not understand why, but now that I'm after being in so many different companies and so many different having so many different jobs i understand it because once you get to that level your feelings are gone because you're playing around with other money you're playing around with this business and you got to make sure this business doesn't fail otherwise your investors your stocks all that is just gone yeah. and the last thing that a person in that position is going to worry about is someone's feelings like oh now if it's something severe like a lawsuit yeah. Then that's of when, course, of course. You know, so that's so basically, if you play with the business, yeah. When you start messing with the business's money, then they'll start paying attention to you. So if you really, really care about that much, or care about that business that much, always try to find a way to file a lawsuit. See, see, I almost think about it, and this is this reminds me of the quote that I always talk about Wabash. Use Wabash like they use you, right? So mm -hmm. when you're like that employee, and we talk about you know being that employee at this hierarchy state or this corporate environment but it's like you're getting paid to do a job why do you care about the company <laughs> you know I, and this is just me you're getting paid to do a job why do you care about the company think about it like why do you care so much about this you know this and why do you care so much about this workshop why do you care so much about this mark why do you care so much about this retail Whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, this um, fast food restaurant, like, why do you even, after work, why do you even take those feelings with you after, like, why do you even let somebody, you know, lack of a better term, piss you off? And, mm -hmm. like, you're getting paid to do a job, so go there, do the job, bump it, you're getting paid regardless. That's the way I, that's, but everybody that's, don't look at it that way, no. you know? Because they haven't, but they that's haven't. how they look at you, so why not look at them the same way? They have, why do you give them more than what they give you? They still believe in the fact that, um, Oh, if I work hard and be respectful and go above and beyond, I'll be recognized. But many times, these aren't the places that you want to go up. It depends. It depends. I mean, it depends on the person. It depends on the job. But right. overall, it was a it was a way of life. I guess maybe in the nineteen early blue collar. Yeah. yeah, those days it was a way back then where you worked hard and gained respect and you worked twenty, thirty years at this job. You'll be in that you know next position, but. The way it is now, it's like you will be at that same position the next thirty years. You'll be at the same position. Or you work ten years and go get somewhere else higher, you know. But it's mm -hmm. like, is that the wrong way to approach it? I would argue that. I think it just depends on where you're working at, what kind of company you're looking into working for. So, like me moving forward, like I want to work for a company that I know. Like the company I worked for this past summer, like I said, like there was delegations, but at the same time, they still really cared for my mental health, my well being. If I was overwhelmed, they were they were like, and I care for the end. yeah. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, I even sat down with my boss at the end of the internship, and he was explaining to me like, like um, kind of like where the where the promotions and the growth and kind of, of things of that nature work. Um, I don't think that for every company, just to, if you work hard and go above and beyond, you'll just be stuck in the same place. But then again, it all—it like you said, it, it depends on what you're working for. So like, 
I mean, I feel like at bigger corporations or bigger companies, sometimes they have room for uh, like promotion and development, but I don't know, that kind of just goes into, not to go off topic, but kind of like background research of who you're applying to, like, mm-hmm. you got to figure out, like, what's that like? Am I going to be able to get promoted here, or am I just going to be stuck in the same place, even if I'm going above and beyond? So, I mean, because I don't want to just, like, just throw out to, like, all the companies, like, oh, they don't they don't, they don't, don't offer nobody no room for promotion. If you go there, you're going to be stuck working. But, I mean, it is true for a lot of places where you work at the same time. So, I mean... Like you said, it, it just kind of depends, but I, I wouldn't say that nowadays, like no company offer any any room for growth or development because, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of it's a lot of like young young talent. It's a lot of people bringing new ideas, new innovative things to the table, like um, just kind of like in our generation in general. So it's like I feel like companies are looking in a way. Some of the companies are looking more into that, and it's like oh, these are the new minds for the future like if we we not if we're not feeding into them then our company's not going you know going anywhere so i guess time, so pr- like, promotion is kind of it comes and it go like i guess the question that i kind of want to stick to is should we care about the company you know because like promotion you can i don't if i'm being honest you can get promoted for a company uh, and, and not care about the company like you just do your job well yeah i think you should so, care about your job <laughs> care about your job because that was that's what cool. That's but cool but, do, but does your job care about you? No, but separate separate the two. Care about the job that and the task and your responsibilities. Okay. Everything else outside of that. Um, because like we talk about it in this society, people come home from work every single day. You know, and something going on, they take it up. They take it after work. They get pissed. Mm-hmm. You know, they like we should be doing this in the right. company. We should be doing this, and and you know this happened. This happened, and and people legit, you know, get fired up about this stuff. And it, it let it, it lingers with them, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you know, it's like, should we allow? Y- y'all see what I'm trying? To, like, yeah, should yeah, we? Yeah. Should you getting paid to do a job? You're gonna get paid regardless. You're not. You're not bad at your job. Why are you letting this affect you? Or should you let it affect you? Why? You know, and they. Unfortunately, everybody is different, and people like to. Well, they feel like they can change something within their co- comfort company or job, and. They think, oh, their idea is the better idea than the way that's in the rubric or description. Right. And that's what causes the frustration and tension because they want to do it this way and so the job is telling you to do it the long way or something like that. But at the end of the day, like, the salary is still the same, you know? That won't change regardless if you do it your way or the long way. So just worry about the job, not the company. So, yeah, that's a good point. I felt like the conversation was like, a little different place, but what you're, you're, I feel like what you're asking is more of a philosophical thing. It's more of like a how you like view and handle life, and um, uh, some of y'all might have heard this before, but it's like don't stress about things that are out of your control. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that includes stuff at work. Like if it's out of your control, like there's no reason to get worked up over it. But um, some stuff that I was thinking about earlier is like. You guys are talking about getting stuck in a job and never getting promoted. I think like working hard is important and caring about the company, like that'll get noticed. But like you also have to put yourself out there a little bit and like let it be known that you're interested in other positions. You want to move up the ladder because I, I think that'll get recognized um, by managers. And whenever they like, whenever an opportunity comes across their desk, they'll be the first person they think of. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, I forgot what else I was gonna say. One thing is, if you don't have stake in the company, why do you care about it? Oh, sorry, oh, okay, not sorry. to cut you off, but I remember the other thing I was thinking about, and it's um, I'm talking about like people being replaceable at jobs, right? Mm. And so, but that's really the way that um, it's designed at the lowest level. Like, if you're if you have a successful business model, and like your lowest level employee should be replaceable in a sense. So, like for example, like in high school, I worked at I worked retail at Banana Republic, you know, clothing store. Yeah. And um, I got, it's like a high school job, you know, like it's not some it's not a position that someone should hold for a long time. Exactly. Like there's they're gonna be cycling people through that like forever. So I mean it makes sense that those employees are viewed as replaceable because they are, they're designed to be. But when you start getting up the ladder more, especially when we're talking about like corporate jobs and like then it's not as like easy to replace people. So that's when the dynamic changes. 
So I guess they like stick. Yeah. Right. So I think like when, especially when you're at that lowest level, you should just do, just do what is required of you. You know what I'm saying? Just get your check. I mean, I mean, we both work there. It, you know, the only thing that changes like is if you if you really like want to work at that company, and you and the best job you can start off as is like a cashier. Well, I guess that's where you got to start, right? And so then you do you like on on top of your stuff as a cashier, make make yourself like one of the best cashiers they got, and then um, you know let the managers know that um, you're interested in you know moving up. Like when there's a position, you want to know about it. And stuff like that but um i also feel like kind of circling like what you said like like why should you why should you care i think it just depends on how much you pour into something mm-hmm. so like i just feel like naturally for anybody the more you pour into something the more you're gonna care about it so it's like mm-hmm. i'm studying i'm studying for this test I, I don't care about this test i don't care yeah. about this class but like i'm putting in hours and hours studying for the success and preparing and if I get a bad grade, then, like, yeah, I'm going to feel some type of way about it because, like, I know I'm putting in hours. So it kind of applies to the same thing, like, to basketball applies to the same thing at, at work. Like, you going in and putting hours at work and make, make, maybe you don't care so much about, like, literally how the company is performing. But, like, like if, you, if you're working in, like, one aspect of the company, like you're a cashier or something, and you, you put in hours and you're trying to be the best cashier, but you still got, like, people at work, like, bickering and and then like it's kind of hard to take that off because you're like man i'm trying to do what i'm trying to do and then like at the same time it's got people mm-hmm. doing this so like you kind of just naturally take that with you just because like if you're pouring in so much the more yeah. you pour in the more you're going to naturally care about it that's so. a good example if you work in a, if you're the hardest working cashier right somebody else the you just getting pissed off because they just met they're not doing nothing that you're doing they're not doing half the task they slow Y'all both getting paid the same. Right. Yeah, but the thing is, is you got an opportunity to move up, they don't. But that's why you care. Right. That's, that's, mm, why, that's why. Okay, you care. okay, so break that down. Break that down. Let's break that down. Like, that's that's noticed, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and even if it, even like, if it's not directly seen by a manager, like if they're out the room or something, like people see, you know what I'm saying? And they recognize, um, you know, who deserves it more. And, you know, they talk about, like, word word spreads. Like, we all know this as humans. Like, gossip, like, rumors, um, everything spreads. Like, if you tell somebody something, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get spread around. So it's the same thing at work. And people are going to know who the hard workers are. Like, just like when you're on a basketball team. Like, you know who the person, who you know who needs to shoot the shot when it's a game winner. Like, say it's the same thing at work. Like, you know who deserves to be the manager. Yeah. Um, if, if there's a position open mm. so like the like the hard work pays off thing is true but you also have to like like that confidence we were talking about earlier yeah. you gotta have the confidence to like say like yeah like i work hard like and i want to be a manager so when there's an opportunity let me know yeah i think i think that's you know you know this is a conversation we can bring back for another pod but I mean, it's almost like, you know, you got to think about it. Am I working smarter or am I working harder? Like, am I, you know, mm-hmm. am I going to be the one that goes in every single day? You know, at Amazon, you know, it's like, or at FedEx, or I used to work, UPS. I go in 15 minutes early, but I'm still getting the same paycheck that the person mm-hmm. that come in, you know, right there on time. So it's like we're doing the same job. Yeah. I'm going, I, I used to wrote blood, sweat, and tears throwing the boxes in the truck. <laughs> and then somebody else would just be, you know, lagging and stuff. And it's like, we getting paid the same. Right. If, if my boxes stack up, and actually, he probably might even get some OT, but you know, because he, but if my boxes stack up, they're not going to fire me, or they're not going to fire me if my boxes stack up, and they ain't going to fire him, because he, yeah. you know, and they ain't going to promote him, because he, he, yeah. got, he left early. I think what it boils down to, then, is your goals. Mm-hmm. If your goal is just to collect your check, do the bare minimum not to get fired. But if your goal is to, you know, to move up the ladder, then, you know, work harder. But, and, and I think, uh, I guess to kind of close out on your question of like why care, or whatever. yeah, last regards, yep, anyway. Um, I think when you're talking about like if you're you shouldn't get mad about other people goofing off or whatever, like that's you know, that's their check, that's their job that they're putting in risk. And I think the only thing you should ever really be upset about is if someone like is rude to you or like disrespects you, like that's sure. the only thing I would, I would be mad about after I leave work. 
So. Uh, last regard, I'll probably say, um, circling back to Zinni, he said this earlier, just uh, control what you can control. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really famous. People people say it a lot, but I mean, it's real. Like, there's no there's no reason in me, and I'm even working through this now, like at school, like getting like overwhelmed about stuff that I can't control. But it's like, um, I don't know, I have a bad practice or something, and then I mean, it's okay to be a little frustrated because I care. That's why I don't naturally feel that way. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to just, like, soak and just be, like, just so upset at myself about it. Like, you got to just move on and control what you can control. Just move on, move forward, think about, think forward, not back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just understand what you're getting yourself into when you're going, when you're wanting to move up. Because, you know, hard work does pay off, but it also comes with harder responsibilities. So, just... Be prepared, and maybe, and maybe at the end of the day, like the position is better off for the older person, and not for you because you might not be able to handle that responsibility. So, mm. Mm. Right, so I'll say, I'll say, um, I'll just say, you know, honestly, you know, just weigh it out. I think that's the best. You know, what are you really here for? What are your motives? What are you looking for? Right, like if you're looking for that promotion, okay, then you know, put your R into it. But if you're not really looking for that, if you come in just for the paycheck, then come just for the paycheck. But regardless of what you're doing, I think that it's vital for us to remember that it is a job. And um, I don't know, like like we talked about earlier, like if you don't have stake in that company, then it's, it's you can only control the things that you can control, right? So like regardless of the decisions that they make. It may affect you, but if you can't have any control over it, then, I mean, go make your own company. That's how I think, you know? So I'm like, go make your own company if you can't, uh, yeah. if you Some can't have a stake in your own. Be your own business. Be right. your own boss. If you don't like it, then don't. Okay. But yeah, that's, um, that's all we got for y'all today. Uh, episode two. And we out. We'll see you next week. week.